the strength of flesh and bone But in the costly wounds of love at the cross My worth is not in skill or name In win or lose, in pride or shame but in the blood of Christ that flowed at the cross I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul A verse from Acts chapter 1, verse 3. After his suffering, Jesus presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. As we've heard that wonderful song by Graham Kendrick and we hear those reassuring and promising words from God's Word. I welcome you this morning to Aiken Parish here in York and thank you for being with us as we worship together. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt 
and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we say together, blessed be God for ever. Join in these responses. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. A prayer by Gregory of Nazianzus. Yesterday I was crucified with Christ. Today I am glorified with him. Yesterday I was dead with Christ. Today I am sharing in his resurrection. Yesterday I was buried with him. Today I am waking with him from the sleep of death. As we look to our Redeemer, let's just think about who he is and what he's done for us and how our lives can be transformed in him as Caris and Tony lead us in this song, Here is Love. Here is love across the ocean Loving kindness as the flood when the prince of my power ransom shed for us his precious blood, who his love will not drink and now, who can cease to sing his praise, he can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and turning to confess our sins to the Lord with a sincere 
and true heart. As we turn to our confessional prayers, let's just think back to that song about the cross. And we had to have the cross, of course, before we could have the victory of Easter. But in that Graham Kendrick song, it said this, there are two wonders here, I confess. And as we confess, these are my worth and my unworthiness. But the answer to that in Jesus is that our value is fixed, our ransom is paid at the cross. Let's be quiet for a moment. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your glorious resurrection. We respond together. In your mercy forgive us, Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. We respond together. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. We respond together. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God of love, mercy and forgiveness. Help us to live within the reality of your transforming love, empowered by your Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing the Gloria together.
As we turn to the Word this Sunday, we begin with our collect for the third Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now Beth brings us our first reading. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. Glory to you, O Lord. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marvelling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Caris and Tony will now lead us in another song, after which we have our reading, read this morning by Caris. Lord, I lift your name on high. sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my dead to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name. verses 12 to 19. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? 
Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's Gospel from Luke, chapter 24, contains the resurrection story. In that, there is the discovery that Jesus has, in fact, risen from the dead because they find the empty tomb and the folded grave clothes and are met by people Today's Gospel from Luke chapter 24 contains a number of things. It contains the resurrection story uh, when people discover that Jesus has risen from the dead. They come across the empty tomb uh, and folded grave clothes and so on. There's also an appearance of Jesus on the road to Emmaus with some of his friends. And when he eats with them, taking bread, blessing it, breaking it and sharing it, so they recognise that it's Jesus, as it reminds them of the Last Supper which they'd celebrated only recently with him. And for us, of course, it reminds us of the actions of the Holy Communion. When we take bread, we bless it, we break it, and we share it. And today, in the same chapter, we heard of Jesus appearing to the eleven gathered disciples and he gives them his peace. It's a little bit like last week's account of the resurrection in John's Gospel when he appears in the locked room with his disciples, with his friends. He does it twice in fact because the first time Thomas is not there and so he comes back again to prove to Thomas that he has risen from the dead, because if you remember, Thomas couldn't believe unless he saw. Again, in today's Gospel, Jesus shows us the marks of the crucifixion on his body. But he eats broiled fish with them to assure them that he is not a spirit, or in some versions, a ghost. He goes on to give a resume as to all that has happened and shows how scripture and prophecy have now been fulfilled. In a moment he then disappears, but before he goes he leaves them with a number of things to ponder. First he says, I will send the promise of my Father upon you. What's that promise? Well, of course, it's the promise of the Holy Spirit to come. He also says to them that you are my witnesses to all of these things. And so by that, he is, in a sense, commissioning them to the work that they are about to take part in as the church begins. Have you noticed that from Easter Day, we are also having a reading from Acts every week, as well as the Gospel reading. 
The trouble is we only hear part of the story as the reading from Acts is a little out of context. For example, this week in Acts chapter 3, it starts in verse 12 with these words. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. What is it? What had he seen? Well, you have to look at the verse before, which we didn't have today. Verse 11, and it tells us that there was a man clinging to Peter and John, surrounded by people who were utterly astonished, we're told. Well, why is that? What's happened? Well, you have to look back even further in that passage, again, to part that we didn't have this morning. In the first part of Acts chapter 3, we have the story of Peter and John who had been going to the temple to pray, but as they were entering what's called the beautiful gate, a begging man, lame from birth, asked them for alms or money. Peter and James say that they have no money, no silver, no gold, but that they, what they do have they will give to him. And then he goes on to say to this man, Jesus says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Peter and John say that they have no money, and it was probably gold or silver in those days, but that what they do have they will give. They go on to say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they command the man to get up and walk. Remember the chorus that sometimes we've sung? Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The chorus goes on. He went walking and leaping and praising God. So, when Peter speaks to the crowd, in verse 12, he says this, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this, this crippled man that is now healed? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? Well, of course, as he says those words, what he's in fact doing is pointing beyond the action and the healing towards Jesus. Acts is sometimes called the Acts of the Apostles because it's what the Apostles did. But we must always remember, remember that they didn't do it in their own strength. They did it through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you could call this book the Acts of the Holy Spirit or the acts of God. So we see here part of the emergence of the early church post-resurrection when in the power of the Holy Spirit it really began to come to life. We see the church coming to life in what we sometimes call the birthday of the church or properly titled Pentecost when the Holy Spirit really came in power upon the disciples, that early church. Uh, and that happened because after Jesus' resurrection and his ascension, he sent the Holy Spirit as he'd promised. So that passage about Pentecost is Acts chapter two, whereas today we've been reading Acts chapter three, which means that this is post Pentecost as well as post resurrection. And so we see here a vast contrast to how the disciples were immediately after the crucifixion when they were fearing for their lives. They locked themselves away in that room together because they thought Jesus had died and that was it. Compare them now, full of confidence and serving the Lord. Confidently now, Peter makes a pointed creedal statement. Pointed by pointing out to the crowd that you have delivered and denied Jesus before Pilate. That you 
have denied the holy and righteousness, and you have killed the author of life. And then Peter goes on to recap the history of salvation, which would have been known through the stories in the Jewish faith to many of the people gathered there. Peter points out too that he and John had witnessed all of this, including Jesus' death and resurrection. It says in Acts chapter 3 verse 13 that God had raised Jesus from the dead. Then, standing firm in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, Peter tells the people that Jesus had made him strong. They knew Peter, they knew what he was like before, they knew how he had denied Christ, and yet now his faith in Jesus is strong. And what he's able to achieve in the name of Jesus is simply amazing. In fact, Peter points to this crippled man that's been made perfect in health in the presence of all the people gathered together. And Peter does all of this by faith in the name of the Lord Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit post-resurrection and post-Pentecost. Confidently, Peter now also calls them to repent and have their sins blotted out. That term blotted out reminds me of an old chorus. God has blotted them out. I'm happy and glad and free. I wonder if you knew that chorus as well. So in Jesus, we can be free from our sin. There is Peter pointing to a possible spiritual setting free that Jesus has made available for those disciples then and he makes available for us today. So then, where are you with the resurrection of Jesus? Still like those first disciples trapped in fear in that locked room? Or are you living in confidence in the light of the resurrection and in the power of the Holy Spirit, with expectation that God will do amazing things and that like Peter and those other disciples, he can use us and all the members of his church to serve him. Remember what Jesus told the disciples in last week's gospel reading from John. Jesus said to Thomas, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So we can be blessed. We can be forgiven. We can be set free. Are you set free? Will you serve Christ and accept the commission that he calls upon each of us to witness to Jesus? Or are you still in that locked room in fear? Jesus wants to set you free to make a difference for him and his kingdom as you serve him in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. I'm going to use some of the words from our collect today. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's together affirm what we believe. Using the words of the Apostles' Creed, we proclaim, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to turn to pray and this morning Ian is leading us in our intercessions. So let's pray. Let us pray for the church, our world, and thank God for his goodness. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. God does not treat us as our sins deserve. A prayer for today, the third Sunday of Easter, from Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and not denied my name. We remember in our prayers today the royal family. We thank you for Her Majesty the Queen, her faithfulness to you, to the Church and to her people. We remember the life of Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, for all he did in supporting Her Majesty in her duty. My father served in the Royal Navy with Prince Philip. Dad said that he was very popular and a really good bloke. My father came from Aberdeen and he said that Philip used to call him Jock. Dad would tell some nice stories about Prince Philip. As we pray for our Queen, we pray for other world leaders. We beseech you, O Lord our God, to set the peace of heaven within the hearts of men that it may bind the nations in a covenant which cannot be broken, that weapons will be laid down and instead hands will be raised to praise you, O Lord our God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, for those in hospitals and care homes. We also pray for nurses, doctors and all those who care for others. In particular, please pray for Rachel Carew, the wife of Richard, vicar of St Edward the Confessor, Dringhouses, and their young family. I spoke with Richard on Tuesday and he said that Rachel came out of hospital last Thursday and is doing well. She is currently isolating with her parents in Bishopthorpe. We also pray for our own Rachel and her family. In a moment of silence, we remember those close to us who are in need of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that we have nice, comfortable homes to return to, where there is food on the table. We pray for those not as fortunate as us, for those who sleep on the streets and in shop doorways. We ask for protection for them from the elements and from those who think it funny 
to physically abuse them. We pray for our community, for our churches and our vicar Pete and all those involved with the day-to-day -day running of our churches. We pray for the PCC and ask you to guide them in the decisions they make, that they will have you at the heart of all they do. We pray for those whom we love and, that, that, and those that love us. And we pray for ourselves and ask that people see you through the actions that we do in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that we have nice, comfortable homes to return to, where there is food on the table. We pray for those not as fortunate as us, for those who live on the streets and in shop doorways. We ask for protection for them from the elements and from those who think it funny to physically abuse them. We pray for our community, for our churches and our vicar Pete, and all those involved with the day-to-day -day running of our churches. We pray for the PCC and ask you to guide them in the decisions they make, that they will have you at the heart of all they do. We pray for those whom we love and those that love us. We pray for ourselves and ask that people see you through the actions that we do in your name. In Matthew 28, Jesus said, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's share the peace together. Using some verses from John's Gospel, which say this. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Some very brief notices this morning. Just two, in fact. The first is that tomorrow, that's Monday at 7.30, we have our next monthly prayer gathering together for the whole parish. And I do hope that you can come and join us. And it's on Zoom, so if you want the details of that, please let me know and I will send those to you. Please do pray with us at 7.30 tomorrow night, even if you can't come on to Zoom. The second thing is that it's not that far away, about a month's time, that we have our next annual parochial church meeting. We only seem to have had one a few months ago, but that was because last year's was delayed with COVID. And so we're going to get back into routine and have it at the right time towards the end of May. In fact, we're having it on the 16th of May. And uh, please think about uh, whether you would like to be on our electoral roll or whether you might like to be on our church council or whether you might like to be a church warden. Either way, for any of those things, do let me know if you would like information and I can provide you with the appropriate forms. And so we now turn
on Sunday the 16th of May, the day of our annual parochial church meeting, we are going to have our service in the parish hall at 9.30, not in church. And then following that, at approximately 10.45, we will have our annual parochial church meeting live in the parish hall for those that can stay or come, uh, with the rest of the people hopefully being able to join on Zoom. That's the best that we can do this year under the present circumstances. Please pray as our annual parochial church meeting approaches. We are going to have a song now. Caris and Tony are going to lead us in our final song, reminding us that we can go out in joy. And that we can go out in joy because of the knowledge of all that the Lord Jesus has done for us. We can live in the reality of that. And as we live in the reality of that, we know that we can go out with joy. Let's sing. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. And the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and the trees of the field shall clap, shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And you'll go out with joy. You shall go out with joy and be there for with peace. And the mountains of the field shall break forth before you can be shot. Thank you very much for being with us today. I hope you've enjoyed our worship as we've honoured the Lord Jesus today. Before we go, if there's anything that uh, we have said or anything that I've mentioned in the notices, you want any of those forms or details of Zoom codes, that sort of thing, please do get in touch with us. And you can always get in touch with us through the website. Uh, you can also contact us through the website if you would like us to pray with you or to pray for you, or you would like to talk to us about anything. We're here for you as your local church. And now our final blessing. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon all those for whom you pray this day and evermore. Amen. He is not here. He is risen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. We say together. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.